Welcome to the Motivate Podcast with Clint Armitage. We are trying to provide Christian motivation one show at a time. And the next one starts right now. Hey, what's up, everybody? Clint Armitage back again for one more episode of the Message Motivate Podcast. This is the third installment, basically part three of a three-part series entitled Three Intriguing Things You May Not Know About Jesus. Now, the first episode, we talked about the birth of Jesus and the Levitical shepherds. Now, and then the second episode, we spoke about the death of Jesus and the veil in the temple as it tore in two and what that signified. And now we're going to be talking about Jesus's occupation. All right. When I say the occupation of Jesus, what do you think about? You automatically think one thing, right? Most of us think carpenter. That's what we think about. We say Jesus is a carpenter. Why? Because the stories and the and the movies and what the Bible says, it does say that Jesus is a carpenter. The translation, you know, all the way back from the 1611 uh, King James Bible translation, translated Jesus' occupation as carpenter. So as it was, you know, oral traditions or, or just the translations that continue to come down and, and get created. And we all, you know, we hear the stories, the, the movies that are made and, and he's a carpenter. Well, I'm here to challenge that. And I'm not challenging it on my behalf. I'm actually challenging it on someone else's behalf. And then you'll just make your own mind up about it and we'll see how it goes. So this is the intriguing thing that you may not know. The word that is used to describe in the Greek, Jesus's occupation is tecton. And that word is spelled T-E-K-T-O-N, tecton. Well, the definition of that word is carpenter, but it also could be stonemason. As a matter of fact, it's it could be all around craftsman, a metallurgist. So we've got carpenter, stonemason, metallurgist. You know, a whole a craftsman. And so when it was translated, it was translated most commonly as carpenter. However, this person, well, I'll just tell you it is, it's Kathy Lee Gifford. Now, I had talked about one of the things I got from her devotional that I read. It was called, uh, it was from her book, The Road, The Rock, and the Rabbi, something like that. And I read actually a devotional that came from that book. And, and it gave me the information that kind of intrigued me about the Levitical shepherds. Now, it also talked about that Jesus being a carpenter was actually a myth. She believes it was a myth. She believes that Jesus was a stonemason. That's intriguing, isn't it? Now, I automatically think carpenter, but I start to, I start to think like, wait a minute, stonemason. Huh. That makes me start to think about the verses in the Bible that describe Jesus as the rock. Multiple times in the Bible, he's described as the rock, right? And he's the stone, the cornerstone. And, and so I start to think, well, if, if he was truly a stonemason, man, it would make this connection with uh, all these Bible verses regarding the rock and the stone come to life even more and be, be really connecting and, and create a cool nexus. Um, but my personal thought is, is that he was a stonemason. I do believe that, but I also believe he was a carpenter. I believe that he was kind of a jack of all trades. So I believe he was a craftsman. And I think that's where the Bible, when, when it's translating those words from the Greek, tecton, I think it, it is craftsmen. Um, I, I kind of just think that Jesus could do those things. He could be a carpenter, but he also could be a stonemason. 
You could be a metallurgist, but I believe kind of carpenter and stonemason. So, a, you know, an all around craftsman. So one of the reasons why Kathy Lee Gifford believes that he was a stonemason and not a carpenter is because she says that during that time in that area of Israel, there was not a lot of forests. There wasn't enough wood for someone to have an occupation as a carpenter. So I was doing a little bit of research. I was online and I was at uh, jesus-story.net and uh, the, the, they have a portion on the website called About Nazareth. And the question was, what was ancient Nazareth like? And so they were talking about what ancient Nazareth was like. And the what they had said was, okay, so Bible study resource, ancient, ancient Nazareth. It says this, Nazareth lay in the hills 12 miles southeast of the Sea of Galilee, fertile land. Excavations show just how small it actually was, but every bit of space was used effectively. It was built on porous rock. So as well as the buildings above the surface, there were underground cisterns for water, vats for oil, and silos for grain. There was a single ancient spring of water. Okay, so right there, they're, they're talking about how not only the underground, but above ground buildings or things that were made in the town of Nazareth was made of porous rock. And so it kind of gives a little bit of credibility to the fact that, hey, maybe there wasn't a lot of wood in the area of Nazareth as he was growing up and learning his trade. And could his father really be a carpenter? If there wasn't much wood in the land, you know, Joseph, who obviously taught Jesus how to be a craftsman, was he working on wood in the area? Now, as you continue to look at the topography, it does look like it's rock, not much wood around. Obviously, there's the forest of Lebanon, but but in terms of Nazareth, it wasn't woody it wasn't foresty it was a town of rock porous rock so again more credibility to that now does this matter in terms of faith no i don't think it matters matters in terms of your faith or your salvation or anything but it is very intriguing to know that it's possible that jesus was a stonemason not a carpenter because we've learned all these years we've you know, heard all these years that, that he was a carpenter, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was a stonemason. Or what I believe is he was a stonemason, but also a carpenter. Depending on what materials were available to him, I think that Joseph was a craftsman, you know, in the, in the kind of general sense of the word tecton. He was a craftsman and he taught his son to be a craftsman. Now, if you think about it, learning more than one trade is kind of typical. Now you could be an expert in one thing, but say, think of construction, right? A construction worker. Now, most of the times a construction worker can do multiple things. They, they don't just do one thing because when you're working in construction, it overlaps sometimes, right? Um, concrete, wood, metal, the different types of trades kind of overlap as they build things like buildings or houses or whatever. And so learning a, a different trade, not even not, be, not necessarily being an expert in each of these trades, but being, say, being an expert in one trade and then also uh, being a part or knowing how to do other things in another trade. That, that's, that's kind of normal in construction work or any type of work. Any type of work. Uh, you may be a, a, a neurosurgeon, but you you would know some things about normal, you know, uh, workings of the body because you're a doctor, right? So it's possible. Anyways, I thought that was really, really intriguing. And I hope you did too. And that was the third installment. So I appreciate you stopping by. And I appreciate you hanging out and learning and also being motivated to learn more. We'll see you next time. My name is Clint Armitage with the Message Motivate Podcast. Stay motivated, stay safe. God bless.
Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Motivate Podcast with Clint Armitage. If you want to get in touch, email us at info at clintarmitage.com. 